Hello everyone, we're going to be going through many different posts on the R. Kurosanti subreddit. A lot of these are going to be drama posts and opinions and allegations and such. Unless there is other proof, take it as an opinion piece and take it as allegations. And I will have as many sources as possible. But if no sources are there, then that means it's just an allegation, a shiitake post, whatever you want to call it. It is to be taken as an opinion. Thank you. Now we talk about Michi Mochi V, who is a, well... Frankenstein type girl, I believe. I'm not sure if she's a zombie per se, but um, she is stitched together, kind of like how Ollie is. Uh, she's going to be playing Ollie's new game. Here is her post, her tweet about it. Biggest number one Koreology fan uh, plays Days with Ollie for the first time. That's Ollie's visual novel. It is a visual novel that popped up recently, and I'm so very glad that she gets it. I'm so very glad that she got something like that. So, you know, it's kind of cool to see Michi Mochi V be someone who plays it. OMG, OMG, let's go, let's go. This person has uh, Ollie twerking, apparently. It's so cute to scar blushes. Yay, Ollie's the best. Uh, stereotyping to assume all zombies just know each other. Regardless, I hope you have fun. Then we have the 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 pengu, I think. it's. I believe this is something that is in Europe. It's like a European uh, claymation thing, I believe. Uh, really, well, it surprised me. I didn't know you were Ollie fan. For real, the person really didn't know. Oh, good. Does Michi know she's supposed to be playing up the first key visual checkpoint? Ollie wants everyone to wait a week before streaming the entire game. Hope she knows. Well, I mean, knowing Michi Mochi V, the fact that she used to be a streamer, um, I'm pretty sure she probably has even maybe even talked to Ollie about this. If not, then I'm pretty sure if she reads these comments, she's going to know about it. Or she's, I mean, if she's a big Ollie fan and Ollie has mentioned this on her streams, she's definitely going to know about it. And she's definitely going to follow what Ollie wants, of course, as an Ollie fan would. I'm glad that she's an Ollie fan. Ollie is uh, underappreciated in many circles, but she is an amazing streamer and she has so much energy. She has, she has infectious energy. Oh God, does Michi know she's only supposed to play? Oh, I read that. Let's see, very excited for my two favorite ID ladies to collab. They may not actually be collabing. You know, it's not an actual collab in this case, but it is kind of, I guess, a weird faux collab, you could call it, I guess, as in like a, a uh, simulated collab, I guess you could call it. Same thing for the simp zombie is pretty base. Otherwise, I think it's impossible to dislike Ollie. I see better follow terms and guidelines. Muchi W. Uh, she's going to follow the terms and guidelines. I'm almost positive. Ollie is the Kamiyoshi, I know. And let's see here if anybody responded. Oh. Uh, that's just basically a repost of everything uh, above that is another post. Apparently, um, it is Pog. It definitely is amazing to, to see both of them, uh, kind of, you know, go for each other. I'm pretty sure Ollie appreciates, uh, Michi as well. Now we go into Vox Akuma things. Um, the CCV, the current CCV for him is, uh, not showing up here. Let's see. It is 2.8 K. I don't think that's the full CCV though. That is just a snapshot. Just letting you know, it is a snapshot of what this person decided. This person could have decided to have made it uh, at the lowest point um, as, you know, that will skew the way that people see it. And people do uh, sometimes put things to skew the view of someone else. That's why I like taking a look at all the information out there. And that's what we're going to do. These are comparisons between a Remu Endo. This is basically what happens usually when a raid happens. You have these little jumps here. Why am I saying this? Because we're going to see later that there was a spike in viewership, a very short spike in viewership, which some people have been attributing to botting. But this is kind of what happens. These spikes happen when raids pop in because you'll have sometimes 100, 200, 300 people popping in. And here's a spike that people are talking about. Here's what I'm, I'm mentioning here. This is VStats. Um, this is a, a, a site that basically this is all they do. They just do VTuber stats. Vox Akuma birthday bash. It stayed around 3000 CCV. Then it popped up to 13K. So someone, and it was just for like, let's see, it just popped up to 13K. It started going up around 540 and it stopped around 553. So someone bought, looks like it bought bots for, for 10 minutes, um, which is strange for someone to do that. Maybe just to pop up the, the peak numbers. Uh, but Vox and anyone else, I can assure you, no VTuber wants this. No VTuber wants a fan to buy this type of stuff for them. No VTuber wants a fan to just buy it this temporarily because it's not actual people. It's not actual, um, you know, people going and actually watching their stuff. So that's the thing. He had 2,500 members in total. I don't know how they have this in live chats. I don't know how they can grab this stuff, but they grab this stuff. Let's go a little bit further. He had a large showing. This is 1 million Japanese yen, but you divide it by 100, it's already like easily maybe like 100k dollars that he has there. No, wait, no. It's like 10k dollars. 10k dollars. My bad. Like $10,000 or so that he got from there. What might I got? Uh, 
because you divide it by 100, so you take away two decimal points, it's about 15, 16K probably around there with the Japanese yen, the way it is. In fact, let me just give you what it is right now. It is $12,417.90. And that is before the 30% that they take. So it's going to be taking about uh, $3,000 or so. So let's just say $9,000 total. And then 50% of that goes to Nidhi Sanji, which is about $4,500. So over $4,000 that he gets in his pocket. And then that, you know, you have to worry about taxes in your area, that kind of stuff. So once again, here we have another VStats area that has this little jump here. Uh, and he had 3000 CCV, 11,000 peak. And that has uh, this, I'm guessing this uh, exclamation point here is because it just seems weird. Again, VStats popping up with the same thing. And this is talking about 2023's birthday bash where he had over 12K at one point. And it, as you can see, more stable everything is way more stable on this one so this one shows more of how he was back then to how he is now of course because of the black stream the black uh you know quote unquote stream that they did this is hurting him big uh when it comes to everything and he had four million japanese yen last time so the vstat data the actual graph is no longer there but he had four million japanese yen before and that shows that his uh compared to now his it, it halved. It's about half the income that he had back then. And this is uh, the birthday clan. This is another one, another uh, March of, you know, his stuff. This is 2022. He also had 20K. So this is, you know, comparing older stuff. And as well, he had 5 million yen. So everything has been dropping for him. It could be because he took a long break and some people don't like it when you take long breaks. It could be very many things that pop up, but it is not looking good in general for Vox Akuma, he's still like, honestly, this type of income is still amazing for anybody. I know anybody would be super happy to have this type of income. So I'm not saying that he didn't have anything, but it is a drop in comparison to 2022 to 2023. And um, this is just a comparison of what another streamer has that has around the same CCV, uh, which was Kyla. Kyla, of course, is beloved by many, but she has 12 hour streams, which isn't, uh, you know, conducive to a lot of people this was a four hour stream so it was a shorter minecraft stream for her minecraft streams usually are 12 hours but this is more of a comparison to someone that is uh incomparable ccv like it wouldn't be good to compare this to like pekora or something like that that has like 10 like 10 sometimes 10 times the ccv or gura who has you know more ccv than him there's someone who has similar ccv and the way these things pop up is what you look at so I'm just trying to give you as much information as possible. Uh, and then we're going to go over a little bit of what people have to say. The whole NGN lost about 30 to 50% overall CCV, 50% plus loss on supas. The JP side has lost some well as about 10%. The girls in the GN have indie level CCV now. They probably are not making enough to make a living. Elira's previous stream had 800 viewers and made very little. They are really just pulling indie numbers at this point. Vox and Elira stuck with NG until the end. See, the thing is, um, you do have situations like their uh, black stream that they recently had uh it can negatively affect your pr it can negatively affect the way people see you of course do not attack any of the livers do not attack anybody if you do not like them do not watch them that's the best thing you can do hate does not beget anything positive hate only begets more hate hate brings more negative energy i don't like negativity that's why I try to be as middle of the road as possible, as neutral as possible. I have my qualms about the company, but the livers are not to blame until they've done something wrong. Even when they've done something wrong, you do not send hate their way. Please do not send hate their way. I'm just randomly choosing things. So don't take um, the ones that I read as, oh, this is gospel. Or don't take the ones that I read as, oh, this is because, you know, they're saying something that I like. I'm just randomly choosing. As you can see, I just scroll down to randomly choose. Fox lost another 10K subs. It was 1.36 million a few days ago. It's a matter of time before he slips below Muna. 10K subs, win or lose, uh, he still has over 1.36 million. So it's not a big hit for him. It's, I think it's like less than 1%. Um, don't care about the, yeah, don't say these negative things. Care more about uh, SX video. Society's healing in terms of CCV, some of the things that I looked at. Critical, holy S. Bibu yesterday had over 44K on a normal Monster Hunter stream. Like I said, it's not good to compare to Bibu or people like that because they are uh, more popular right now. They're from a company that doesn't have a huge amount of negativity going around them. It's not around a big negative point in their career. Like, for example, CCV's probably dropped during the China incident and things like that for Hololife. So I'm just trying to give you some perspective here. Someone uses bots to raid some EN girls due to some dumb and malicious reasons. 
got lost in argument or something for Chan. As Bibu fan, it's like my Kamiyoshi. Please don't believe when she gets around 20k plus CCV in a normal gaming stream. Only in a special stream like her recent birthday celebration gets you 20k CCV. Her average viewers are on an 8k. Check the likes on the stream first, and you can re pretty much guesstimate the number of, of minimum number of two watchers. Yeah, uh, it looks like someone did bot her for this over 44k. So even the big ones get bots. That's the thing. Everyone can get botted at some point in time. It happens. Uh, they do it to try to make you look bad. They do it to try to get YouTube against you. It's just, it happened. So don't take it as gospel. Here we have another group that is apparently popping up a lot. Holy moly, that is a lot of people. Let me see if this is real. Let me just see if this is real. Holy moly, it's real. There are a lot of people popping in here. That's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. That's 27 in three days that are going to be popping through. This is a large, large group of people. It is flooding the market. I don't know if each one of these has something um, unique, and I hope they do. And um, of course, we have the Annie Live. They're under the Annie Live. Nexus, I guess, is under Annie Live. Stream anytime, anywhere. Alpha application. Follow the instructions below to onboard this amazing journey with us. Only a few steps to go before you can check the streams and receive daily login coins at Annie Live. We truly appreciate your support. I guess this is um, joining the Annie Live. I don't know exactly what this is for. This is we truly appreciate your support, insights, and feedback. It is for iOS form only. You have an Android device. Oh, I guess it's an application to see all of these people. It is very interesting to see overall. Now, um, 27 debuts across three days on an obscure proprietary app. Yeah, Annie Live is the app uh, that requires you to sign up for filling out a Google Doc form. I see much better business plans fail horribly. This is cruel. Can't help but feel like you're setting up the talents for failure on this. I honestly agree. This is setting up the talents for failure. This is honestly setting up. Uh, this is not a good setup for the talents. I mean, 27 debuts at pretty much the same time is actually insane. This is going to turn a battle royale of talents having to fight against each other for viewership. You're competing with yourself. It's just, yeah, it's not, not good. Not good. Let's go. Hope I'll be able to see there for as many as I can. I mean, I like supporting uh, the indies. I really want to support indies, but this is flooding the market. This isn't good for any of these people. I guarantee you that these are all entertaining people. These are all people who are putting their 150%, their 1,000% in all of this. But this company, this group, is not doing them any favors by putting this type of thing out. If you would have done it maybe three a month, that would have been different. Or let's even let's say even nine a month. You do nine a month. That would have been fine. Or even three, like three a week and just do three a week. The, anything better than this. 27 across three days, that's nine every day. And only 30 minutes from each other? That's severe competition. That's setting them up to fail. I don't like that they're doing this, but let's look at the company itself. Nexus, where potential meets opportunity. Embark on a transformative journey of potential talents and stuff like that is where a uh, transformative journey where potential meets opportunity in Nexus academia dedicated to sculpting features and talents and yeah they're just popping through all of these the talents here next generation these are all the talents that they have here about us here at four creators we have a clear vision to evolve the world of virtual entertainment we support creators of all kinds fostering a community that as engaging as it is inspiring our goal is simple yet ambitious to be the launch pad where passionate creators find their spark and become the stars of a new digital era as the founder for, of Four Creators, my aim is to create opportunities for creators to shine on a global stage. We're on this journey together to not just chase the future, but to craft our own hands. Welcome aboard. Let's enter, make entertainment that excites the world together. Well, you're not really helping that if you are doing this specifically. Uh, launching, launching Nexus, which is, I guess, their, uh, this big VTuber group. Uh, they did funding on December 14th. Uh, Virtual Talent Academia. They copied Virtual Talent Academy. It looks like it's the direct copy of Virtual Talent Academy for uh, Nidhi Sanji. Uh, they're doing, uh, thank you for interest in first audition. Uh, I'm thrilled to see overwhelming interest. Basically, the EN VTuber market is a turning point. Existing VTuber agencies, they're basically trying to flood the market, it looks like. Superstar is born to represent the platform. Many firms see the stars enter the market looking for business opportunities, mass production. Uh, of individual talents who do not bring a firm and small, medium-sized firms cannot scale. They're, they're talking about mass production here. Uh, of individual talents who do not belong to a firm and to small and small to medium-sized firms that cannot scale. So they're talking about mass production here, and that's exactly what they just did with Nexus. I don't get it. Uh, you know, this is all talking about uh, sustainability of existing VTuber agency models becoming challenging. So they're deciding to flood the market pretty much to fix this, I guess. Based on this analysis, our answer is for creators and Nexus are to dominate new platforms, 
to construct a new agency model. Why any live? Uh, transition of platforms discussed above, the crucial to have a place where emerging talents can succeed. Believe any live is the place for EN VTubers. Leave out a detailed explanation of any live. Here's they will be sharing more soon. Uh, their stream anytime, anywhere. And uh, past experience with 17 live, because I guess that's where they came from. Not a virtual focus platform, but this one's trying to focus on VTubers. Uh, show that successful streamers broadcast almost daily, creating comforting community from good morning to good night to their fans. Uh, though this is why the audition requirements include streaming for two hours over 20 days, totaling over 40 hours, suitable for those who can habitually stream daily, regardless of their daily schedules. So yeah, they're trying to basically flood the market from what I'm seeing. They're, they had a good amount of funding from what it looks like. Um, Robust group of investors, uh, founder of Freakout Holdings, Takahiro Hayashi, Heroes, uh, founder of Well Played Re Resist, uh, founder of Paraichi, CMO of Awe, uh, CEO of Takami Oshi, Angel Round Inc. And yeah, they're trying to basically make it work. They launched it and they said, uh, born a Japanese Taiwanese mix, spending most of my life in Japan. From a young age, they've been enamored with anime. Family dinners often accompanied by 7 p.m. anime shows on TV. During student years, obsessively aimed to be the best in both academics and sports. Believing that excelling in studies and landing a job at a prestigious company was the key to happiness. Uh, a notion I now find somewhat ridiculous. Um, my turning point came after entering university in 2015, pivotal year when the term influencer began to dominate public discourse. Uh, it was after Amazon's acquisition of Twitch. They're just going about his old story. Um, and he's trying to look, you know, at influencers seem to effortlessly gain fame and fortune through playing games or creating whimsical videos, stark contrast from a disciplined approach. And admittedly, I found hard to swallow that they are having success with a smile. Yet at the same time, I found myself drawn to this world. This is why he did what he did. Nexus aims to be academia for talents, uh, aspiring to become the next generation of virtual stars, like virtual talent version of the famous hero Academy. So basically they're trying to do my hero academia. But for um, for VTubers, I guess, designed for those who are serious about achieving their dreams, offering a place where passionate individuals can meet, learn, grow by enhancing their unique talents through rigorous training. Unlike typical agencies that focus on select few, Nexus, due to my background, is committed to helping a larger number of people succeed in the VTuber industry. But this whole throw everything at the wall and see what sticks is not going to work very well because it isn't working for Didi Sanji 100%. Because yes, they get a lot of views and they get a lot of money, but individually they're not doing too well. They're trying to provide a launch pad to anyone who want to make a VTuber their career. Over, over 20 first generation num members are preparing for their debut, yet 27 as we know now. Moving forward, uh, new Oshi experiences for VTuber fans, new career path for aspiring VTubers. Over 10 talents is already a significant challenge. It's to become a launch pad for 100, eventually over 1,000 talents. So they are quite literally going for throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. This is, I don't know how this is going to go. But this is a disservice to the people who are actually working their ass off in Nexus to try to make a name for themselves because you have this large group of people who people aren't going to know who to follow. Their various attempts will serve as knowledge for future talents and set them as role models. While there's no, So basically, you're saying if they fail, well, we're going to learn from that. That is not fair to the people who are going through all of this, who are actually putting their heart and soul into their work. Just being like, eh, if they fail, they fail. If they don't, they don't. And we're going to learn from that. That's kind of not fair at all. We aim to create an environment that strengthens basic skills, allowing for individuality. Discussion around the talent management is evolving. And Nexus, we believe in advancing the traditional methods to foster a supportive relationship between the company and the talents. Yeah, this isn't fair. This isn't fair to the people who are actually putting their all into this, who are actually doing everything that they can to work their butts off. These people, these 27, it's not fair to them. They are going to get drowned in a sea of everyone else in their company. And you're like, oh, if it doesn't work, well, then we're going to fix it afterwards. Why not just go for the tried and true right now? And if that works, then you can try going maybe doubling it. If you started with like six, maybe doubling it to 12, seeing if that works and then testing it out that way if you want. Because I don't know, this just feels very, very bad for the talents. I honestly don't like companies that do this. But I do say that if you want to support the talents, please do, because each and every one of them are putting their hearts and souls into their work, like everyone who's a VTuber does. Here we have more uh, regular merch. I always have uh, criticized them on their merch because of the fact that a large corporation like this should have at least someone who is uh, no knowledgeable in art, knowledgeable in something like that. Um, in the sense that they should at least have someone somewhere around there to kind of be a bit more creative. Now, this could be a create something created just to bring controversy. So, of course, I have to check and make sure. And yes, this is true. A critic panel set, B2 cloth poster set. It's part of their new stuff. 
at least they're having cloth posters now. Uh, the Krennic panel looks kind of the same. The charms look kind of the same. The buttons look a little, I guess, different in the way. Uh, the um, snapshot is a new idea, but it's still 2D things. It's still not like plushies or, you know, things like that. I think a lot of them do have plushies, but at least, you know, if they're going to do birthday merch or any kind of things like that, they should um, do something a little bit more creative, maybe even a Daki Makura, something like that. Uh, it could very well be. That Nidhi Sanji, what he wants to do is it wants to remain uh, consistent with every single type of birthday merch. Because if they change the birthday merch now, then they may think that they have to change the birthday merch for other people in the past. Like other past people bring new birthday merch in the future. And I, I guess they already have like a assembly line of these types of things. They already have a bunch. They probably have already pre-ordered and they want to get their money back. Now, again, these all are, are opinions of people who did these types of things. These are not um, seen as gospel down here in the comment section. Nothing here is ever seen as gospel. Everything here is the opinion stated down below unless they have something to back it up, which 99% of these people don't have anything to back it up except just their opinion, which they're entitled to do. Also note they have the same outfit for Shoes Birthday merch in the past two years now, despite him having a second outfit that they could have used as they did with previous livers, such as Sunny Briscoe and Anna Alouette. Also notice they didn't even zoom in on the autograph charm that they use showcase as well. Uh, Sonny Briscoe is the same name as the guy from Law & Order. I probably think at 88 Dominic Sonny Carlsey. Oh, at Law & Order. I am a Law & Order person too. I love Law & Order. I've watched like Special Victims Union and all the other stuff. It's crazy that compared to regular behavior, this is them trying the laughably low effort amount of merch, events, and work put into by management. It's probably genuinely the most they've ever done for these talents up to this point. This person's opinion says it reeks of desperation. Sudden surge of merch, they are live for Song of TTT. They suddenly play nice and act like they care about plushies uh, and pushes out tons of low effort things. Yeah, they, they think they, they act like they care. Well, at least that's what this person says. Freelancers can make better fan merch than the main company. Badges and cards, at least add stickers and bookmarks since the main job would be printing. The fact that they have uh, to specify that this is an illustration is nearly newly drawn. Makes me wonder how often they just reuse old illustrations. When you're trying to make it so that you don't spend a lot, you probably reuse a lot of illustrations. Um, there's nothing wrong with that per se. If people are going to buy it, if there's going to be a market, then yes. Okay, the market will dictate whether or not you are uh, do right in doing what you do. And this person actually puts something behind their words. It says, and what a surprise, exactly the same as all the other birthday merch. God forbid some creativity. I will admit that the illustrations are usually pretty good, but damn, the variation is non-existent. And this is, you know, a comparison that was done before of all the birthday merch of Vox Akama, Goods and Voice, the uh, the canvas panel. They used to be canvas panel. Now it's cloth. Uh, B2 uh, tapestry. They do have B2. They used to have tapestries as well. Uh, now it's cloth. All these merch are copy pasted. Like I said, when you have somebody that is making your product for a long time, you can just be like, yeah, um, we want the same order, but with this, uh, you know, this visual instead. We want the same type of order, but with this visual instead. Everything else the same, but with this visual instead. That makes it tons easier for anybody to uh, make this stuff again and again and again. And apparently they have 39 more images. These are all the same. Rosami, Uki, Pomu, Kyo. And uh, everybody has the same. It's just again and again and again. Like I said, it's a assembly line. Nothing wrong with that. Like I said, the uh, market will be the one that decides. And this is someone else's merch. It is shared with Hakito Tinbox. This is Hakito um, Funny Burbs wallet. He actually made a wallet. Reusable Kombini style bagito. Reusable bag. Voice pack. This is, I'm assuming, is another... Uh, it's hollow stars. This is hollow stars. But yeah, it's it's nice that they get these wallets. They get the birthday merch here. Like look at the uh the stuff here. Um in everything that's being put out here. Uh you have the little bird uh charm thingy here with the reusable bag. You have uh burb wallet. You have because he called himself he's a bird, so you know he calls himself burb. You have him eating a melon pan here, a bonus uh bromide card, and a voice pack. And that is the difference. If they try to be original, at least they try to have something new, and that's always good. Now, moving on to just more regular uh, Kuro Sanji drama, which of course the Kuro Sanji drama is always strong here because people from our Kuro Sanji love drama, they love to speculate, they love drama. So, <clears throat> let's take a little look at this. This person, Instagram, asks people to comment but turns off comments to avoid Lyra hate. Sometimes people turn off comments just to not get hated themselves. I don't know who this person is. Sanji Sanji dropped some. Uh, chocolate looks like or other out there food combos in the comments of their Pandora, but they don't show that the comments have been removed. So this is 
a vague post. This is just drama stirring up. I guess just to stir up the storm. IQ brain move there. I'd say 20 at most, honestly. Like these people are just, they hate. They hate just for the sake of hating. And that's fine, I guess. I mean, as long as you have proof of what the hate is all about. But if you're just going to hate without any kind of proof behind it, it's kind of, you know, it's just disingenuous, I think. Please understand minimum wage in turn Kuhn tried their best. Um, also, this is like an Edi Sanji post. Okay. They wanted Achan and said they got a wish off Achan. Like I said, people really, really, really hate Nidhi Sanji here. I try to be more neutral. He was underpaid high school grad. They hired, managed the account, probably wasn't even informed about what's been going on. Of course, they wouldn't be informed, of course. Uh, she has an Insta now. Um, Niji and Insta. Oh, okay. It's Niji and Insta, like I said before. Uh, management definitely knows how to impact the stream. They try, they try PR. That's what it is. Got to give it to them. They always stay on brand. It's just, this is, you know, this is just a hate post just for hate posting, I guess. Here's a little bit of meme slash drama area that we're going to go over. Going to go over it pretty quickly because it is just meme slash drama. Green Parrot, what did you do? Slash joke. But, um, hey, people are going over Hololive now. Yeah, the Mark Calliope thing where, uh, she in an English stream said she likes Shotokan, or at least she was saying it probably just to make sure that uh you know the, the japanese fans felt comfortable but still a lot of people over in the west a lot of tourists have seen uh it as you know her tacitly agreeing to liking little boys and that's not the way it works in the vtuber sphere it's not the way it works in hololive it's young appearing people uh that's what a lot of people don't know about the whole shotokan thing i'm not into that i'm i don't really condone that per se myself but i can see uh, where there's confusion, there's a culture shock between the two sides. Of course, Rev says Desi, which is the person that I follow, also mentioned that um, that this person out here talks about an old English session. I think it was maybe like a year ago. It was something from the past, I think. It wasn't something that she did recently. At least I don't think it was. I went over the, uh, it in a video that I recently made last night. And it didn't seem like, it seemed like a nothing burger. And this is where he actually goes against Parrot, goes against Sankenji, talking about all the Hololive VTubers that are, uh, and people that are in the VTuber sphere and VTuber community that are into and also joke about Lolly and Shota. And of course, we have the opinions of people down here. Of course, it's all opinion, not fact. These are all people's just ideas. This is a total nothing burger. Just Twitter idiots mauling over Cali for the billionth effing time. Next, they'll attack Gur again because their design promotes CP. Exactly. I'm just going over the top comments a lot of times. Let them uh, go after Hololive. Do they think attacking Hololive is the same as attacking as a small, medium indie VTuber? They will get sent to the billion. Side note, I just wait for the day they attack Hollow ID and see a true massacre. Yeah, this is like, this is just people hating. It's just what's going to be. Like I said, this is me just going down and checking the top comments. Twitter users going after Hollowmans because they like Shota and her lolly is a take as old as time. Same goes with Cali Hate too. I know I've been around VTubing space in 2017 and started Hololive fans first couple of years. Still am, but I'm also a fan of VTubers outside Hololive as well. Funnily enough, unless I missed it in Parrot's post, there isn't even a pic of Cali. Uh, in there, there isn't, as far as I know. They've always been going for Hollow regardless of the topic. Uh, currently, uh, one is just about some hollows that can show up to characters. If it wasn't that, it would be something else they would ex they would complain about. They have always disliked Hollow before. It was because of the rise and writing of Niji's coattails, supposedly. And now they hate Hollow because it's past Niji and Niji's on the decline and they can't, for their own sanity, blame Niji for the problems. Again, there are many people that have more comments down below, as you can see. I'm not going to go over every single one of them, just random ones that I've chosen. And um, yeah, you know, people are also mentioning kind of just memeing on the con the the department of marketing because of the fact that people don't know about Niji Sanji so much. Um, it's just also the Clippers. The Clippers have a lot to do with it. Uh, I don't know how Hololive markets their people, but I got into Hololive thanks to clipping. Um, I, I have seen the people that I have seen in Niji, the people that I have uh, actually watched in Niji, usually also ended up from clipping. The clip channels, random clip channels that pop up on my feed, I will take a look at them. And then that's what will happen. So I don't think it's necessarily bad, good to just go S on the marketing department because it's fun to S on uh, Niji Sanji at this point. Marketing is so strange. It's 2020, right before it in IN disbanded. Uh, that's India. I was recommended clips from ID branch and they didn't even know ID was even a branch, though there was just a big group of friends who called themselves Niji Sanji. Or when you realize that JP Livers, even top ones, Akusa had, no, had no idea that EN even existed. Yeah, I mean, internally, that's bad. Internally, that's bad. But externally, it's not really, it's like a nothing burger as well, I think. Marketing department are either interns fumbling around or be bots that would explain why they think it's a good idea to promote merch right after Selene termination. They, well, they're going to do what corporate does always. It's like, well, let's hope people forget. And we know that our fans, the people who like us, are still going to buy this merch. So maybe we won't get new people 
buying the merch, but we'll get the old people buying the merch, and that's helped us before. That's what a lot of times they'll think. I think people f fail to understand that if talents are poorly paid, there's a great chance that workers too, which could explain a lot. There's already active the translator are paid with peanuts. I doubt that it's widely different in interns. I called that out months ago, and Niji's sisters treated me like I was crazy. Only last year did I find out that Tsukinomito was a crazy popular pillar in Niji, and Fuwa Minato was even a Niji Sanji talent, despite frequently seeing him collab with Mafu Mafu, because I thought it was indie the whole time. Heck, when I first got into VTubing, every VTuber I was interested in was Niji Sanji, and they were all graduated. And I just kept uh, keeping up on Lulu graduating. Don't even get me started on Melissa and how Niji absolutely stupid they were for letting one of their best singers go. Anna's a pretty good singer right now, if you want to go for singers, honestly. Don't think that's hard enough, okay. One identifies as non-binary, one recently graduated, one left because they couldn't negotiate music rights with Niji, one left due to harassment and doxing. Two of these are about one person. Can you identify who fits 24-7? So it's four out of seven. Um, yeah, it is unfortunate that any of these had this issue. That any VTuber, period, has this issue. Should not happen in a large organization. Should not happen, period, in the VTuber industry. Again, these are all random ones that I just chose. Uh, don't take it as me spouting this as gospel. Don't take it as me spouting this as the truth. Of course, comments for anyone with, you know, a regular functioning logic will say comments are comments and comments aren't to be taken as gospel. Uh, let's see, they don't want you to know that all the livers so that other livers go into the controversy. You won't know. That is be the how the fan base is cultivated. Whenever something happened with a liver, the mentality of a fan base is just do whatever you want to him, her, as long as it won't affect my Oshi. And here is the Copium Wars, the last little bit of uh, memeing that I will show you guys. Basically, you know, Didi Sanji and uh, Vox running to Billy Billy, which is, you know, the Chinese flag right here. And the people who are winning, which are, you know, Doki, uh, Matara, Mint, who all have their silver play buttons. You have other people like K9 Kuro, who also has a play button. Um, you know, you, you're going to have Michi Mochi V, which is going to be having their play button. All former Niji Sanji talents. And yes, the Niji sisters are huffing on copium. Uh, but uh, when someone identifies, has their identity, their full identity and their full uh, happiness connected to a company or a VTuber for people who are, I guess some, some would call them simps, some would call them simping for a VTuber. If you tie your identity so hard to a VTuber that you attack another one because they're doing something similar, then um, I guess just keep doing what you're doing if it makes you happy. It's never too late to make Kurosanji meme. Even when the company is dead and buried, it's still pee on their grave. I could should have been Claude instead of Pepe. They could have requested it, right? Yeah, I mean, there's all these things. Uh, it was you, Nichihara, uh, for the idea. The original meme is this one and this one. The Copium Wars, the second Copium Wars, this one here. Dota community is superb at making a meme. It is this one here. Apparently, it's an archive post. I'm not seeing where the meme is, but uh, this person claims that this is the meme. They claim all these things, but um, at least they gave some sort of evidence around here of what's going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, here is the meme directly from uh, this channel, Richard Lewis. So they hopped this meme on here and they just added Vox Akuma over here. They pretty much copy pasted, but they added Vox Akuma, which is pretty much what happens with most memes. So this person copy pasted this meme. Uh, this Rainbow Valley Everest copy pasted the meme. Uh, but, you know, still try to make it original. Still try to at least uh, make it uh, on the subject of Nidhi Sanji, unlike other posts that are not on the subject. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.